boys' land, you have to be a man to farm it. Probably turn my sat sat nav off. They're just exploding. So that's my little rant of the day out of the way. So I knew I would have to do this, but so whoom, 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 whoom. F A five, F fifteen. Good morning, Fenlanders. How are we doing? I'm Daniel. Welcome to Fenland Farming Adventures. Yeah. Welcome to probably about quarter past five, or half past five now. Half past five in the morning. Grumpy Granddad just give me a little escort over to the hot hold. Get my black soil dressed up. Ready to rock and roll. Uh, I'm not really with it yet. It was quarter past four, I think, this morning when I rolled out of bed. So I know some of you are used to that, but with my 45, 50 acres of potatoes, I don't need to worry that hard. <laughs> I just, we were just wanting to get this basil here over Hopwold, which is about 10 or 11 miles away from the homestead. Yeah, so running a 3.8 meter basil here along the road is all good. Escort, nice and early in the morning, no traffic. No one to worry about. I only met two cars, so nothing too major. They all slowed down and got out of the way, which was great. Uh, sometimes when you move a combine, we've, we've found, you know, getting up early and moving the combine at dusk or dawn is the best time of day to be moving anything. Uh, big and wide and clumsy. Oof, getting warm in here now, but they talk to two degrees overnight, so we've put all the potato lorries, shall we say, under cover. Got everything tucked away in the, in the shed, just in case there was a tinge of frost on the potatoes, which wouldn't have done them any good at all. So today's battle plan is to get this uh, 23 acre field all dressed up and Grumpy Grandad's gonna run all my kit over now. So yeah, he's gonna start, start ferrying stuff over to me and then we'll start making an awesome video. But we're here on the Basilea. Basically all the Basilea does is just a hook tying cultivator that keeps coming around and something there. Bit of wood or a badger or something. Yeah, I'm, I'm currently going down the edge where the dike is. But yeah, the, the basil is just a hook tying cultivator with loads of gnarly teeth. Smashes all the clods up really. There's no clods on this field to worry about too much. But we just run it over there as quick as quick as we can and, and just make a bed really more than anything. Uh, we, we did notice the difference when we didn't do it. Let's put it like that. We just came over here and planted into cultivated land one, one year and you end up with a load of clods. So. Better to do a good job of it and just run this thing over it. Uh, Power Harrow does a pretty good job on this sort of land. It doesn't make the bed. We've got the ridging bodies on the back of this bed anyway. So yeah, just race along and um, put the nematorin on and, and make a bed really more than anything. The, the land is steaming behind me, but you've not seen that. Lovely morning, nice crisp morning. You can see the sun now coming up over my shoulder. Life of a farmer. Get out early, crack on, get the job done. Perhaps have tomorrow spray in, so a bit of a day off. And then Friday I'm off anyway, so. Friday I've got to escort two young, uh, lovely young ladies to the new market races. Uh, chaperone Mr. Sizer. Yeah, my mum's friends, two 80 year old ladies want to go to the new market races, so I've been drafted in as taxi driver. Yeah. They're, they're good fun though, they just like to get they like to get hammered and have a good time, so it's great. I'm not putting any headlands in on this field. The end back there I just uh, marked it out like three basilea whips in and I'll do the same this end. Uh, I might go four on this end. So we'll just run this round. I'll probably go four ends this end because I've got to run my sprayer along here somehow. Yeah, the muck and the wheat, there's nearly, there's nearly another crop of wheat on this field, isn't it? It's a bit silly really, isn't it? We planted it with wheat with some leftover seed we had. It was due to come in potatoes anyway, and like with the crap we had in November, we were just having to shift our potatoes as quick as anything. We were like, nah, we're not having it. So I went and drilled it, and then Dad was like, mm, I don't know, maybe like, we'll have one more like hard year, shall we say, for him um, running over hot walls. 10 or 11 miles away to our furthest away field and uh, and then we'll have an easy, easier time of it and just grow potatoes around, around the farm. That's four beds, one, two, three, four, four beds away or eight beds away from the end. So ne nearly the spray wheel and anyway, this bit, this end of the river lays 
soaking wet. Um, if it comes wet, we're screwed. We just cannot get near it. Like I was saying about bottomless, it is boys' land. You have to be a man to farm it. Lots of people come down and try and farm this sort of land with no knowledge of what they're doing. They come from like heavy ground and sandy land and stuff, you know, where their their land is so forgiving when it comes wet, they can go on it any time they like. Yeah, you can't on this. <laughs> a few of my friends have come a bit unstuck. They're like, oh, can I get a pigeon tune? I'm like, yeah, yeah, just don't go down the bottom end of this field or that field. And uh, yeah, here they, they turn up and go straight into the wet hole which is pretty stupid. Especially going in places where I've told them not to go. That's that's the usual trick we get. You know, whatever you do, don't go here. Oh yeah, all right, no worries, I know what I'm doing. Hey, been stuck yet, ha ha ha. And then they do. That's cool, isn't it? Steam coming out of the land. My good friend Bert, his land, fields and stuff are next door. Bertie boy. Yeah, today's going to be a good day for sunglasses, I think. I think today's the last... Let's have a look, shall we? What weather apps people use? Um, I'm struggling. I have the BBC weather app, and I got on great with that, but that wants me to sign in. I ain't doing no signing in. Uh, no, actually, tomorrow's not going to be too bad now. Like a shining beacon of light. Look at that, look. I know my windows a bit dirty, no laugh. Boy fix. Yeah, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. All rain. Look at that, look. I'll be glad when we get done. Hopefully I'll get my spray done tomorrow as well, and then Friday off, day off. Nice early start, hopefully a nice early finish for the Basilea, and that can uh, sit on the side of the field until we're all ready to move home, and then Nine o'clock tonight, we'll come back and uh, and grab it, you know. Ten o'clock tonight when there's uh, a bit of daylight still and, uh, and and run it home. I will bid you farewell now, Fernandez, and I will reconvene when I get on to something else. Cheers, guys. Hello, Fernandez. How are we doing? Finally, been got my planner at twenty past nine. Grumpy Granddad just done a lot of running around. Bought the two trailers over there, the fertiliser trailer. And then he said, oh, I caught with you and you can go get a planter. Breaks it up for it. He robbed us really, so uh, yeah, now we're going to get started planting. I hope. Yeah, I'll get cracking on and then um, we'll get the drone out. I'll start doing some more filming. This is our last field, as I've said about 100 times before. Um, yeah, we'll explain our uh, lovely rich black soil that everybody wants to look like check out so ugh. probably turn my sat ugh, sat nav off the whole there so it's down a proper crappy old farm track sometimes it gets done up sometimes it doesn't so and I got my fur tank on the front so I'm gonna have to look look ahead and see where I'm supposed to be driving but yeah no we're, we're sort of on course it won't take me long to plant 23 acres probably only about 20 acres with all the headlands and stuff we need I'm not gonna bother putting any headlands in end rows whatever you want to call them just gonna make life easy for ourselves you know so I've got a big long irrigator that'll reach right through there so my biggest irrigator 550 meters will come over here and just stay over here well, we'll try it with no headlands. We'll see how we get on. Oh, normally we like planting headlands and stuff. It makes it a lot easier for spraying, but there's not really anything either end of this field. River one end and a bank the other end. There's a couple of trees the other end, but I should be able to lift up and go over them. So, should be all good. I can't, I can't wait to get finished. I'd like to say I'm going to the Caribbean for a cocktail and a bit of beach weather, but you know what farming's like. Never ending. So, I am going to probably have a little lay in tomorrow morning after starting at half three this morning gonna be a bit easier with the filling up and stuff because i've got all the uh potatoes in boxes now so instead of three three different things i've got to fill up i've only got to fill one up so it should be all good i'll run my uh clean water tank out and then i'll take my shins off for the 
uh, Vellum Prime and I'll see how that goes. I just want to clear the water out of it really. Dilute the Vellum Prime that was in there, have a good little clear out, a little flush out. Yeah, no, the RSPB have moved into the field that they bought off um, out of my nan. So they've moved in there now. We've been farming it for the last, oh, when did my nan die? 2009? Yeah, Nan died in 2009, so we've been farming it since then. And uh, now they're finally taking it back, and the first thing they're doing is building a badger set. And even the RSPB came over and said, it's really stupid. Like, the RSPB obviously love birds, and we all love birds, and badgers like eating ground nesting birds, so it's gonna cause havoc with their ecosystem. They're just not necessary. I, I just don't understand. I mean, they start digging up your field and the gateways collapse and bits of your dike bank and stuff all collapse. So they're just exploding with the amount of food and stuff there is around here. Ground nesting birds and things like that. And I haven't seen no hedgehogs on the field. So guessing they're not eating them. But if there's a massive food source for them, they're going to explode. We never had badgers around here. They were more like hillier, heavier ground kind of animals. But since there's no way to get rid of them, you, they're just exploding. It's just a nightmare. You know, we don't want to clear them right out. We don't want to eradicate them, but they're just exploding. The, the numbers are just exploding, and there's, there's two or three sets right in the middle of my field. So you're not supposed to destroy a set, but I ain't going to go round it with a tractor. I'm going over it. So that's my little rant of the day out of the way. We're away, Fernandez. We're away. Uh, how many of you lot have all got structural planters? And how many of you all got cut planters still? I got a comment last night saying, oh, after seeing that, I'm not gonna buy a belt planter. My, mine's bang on 12 inches. I've set it for, only because the belt's worn out on the back there that I've set it for nine. So I have to just adjust myself. Like nine and 10 on my computer is uh, 12 and 14. So that's the only reason I have to do that. It's because the belt's worn out on the, on the back there. That, you know, 400 pound belt, or I just keep going till it breaks, you know, I'm not gonna change it for the sake of changing it. Yeah, so uh, I just, I wondered how you all got on with your, with your belt planters. I mean, everyone around me's got a belt planter. There's nobody really, Mark, Farmer Palmer, he's got a cut planter. My friend Rob Phillips has got a cut planter, and Matthew and Lord Barnett have got a cut planter, but now everyone around my way has all got belt planters. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if David watching, Hello David, I appreciate your comment. I just, um, I, w I wanted to know really. I just, mine does a mega job and I'm sailing along here at seven and a half K. Yeah, yeah, just, just, just wonder really. I mean, mine's doing a mega job. It's, it's almost bang on 12 inches. So I'll, uh, we'll get out and have a dig in a minute. If it's just under 12 inches, I don't mind. My cousin Ollie's planted his Babylon at just over 11 inches. So I think that's a bit too tight, but dust is starting to become a problem now. That is the trouble. Grumpy Grandad's so far in front of me now that dust is going to become an issue. If I get three rounds out of this, that's six beds. Crikey, I'm going to have a load of seed left over at this rate. Like a half a trailer load. Yeah, so I knew I would have to do this, but uh, my Vellum Prime, my extra shin that I put on for putting the nozzle in for the Vellum Prime, because there's so much muck and uh, I mean the wheat started growing again, and especially next to the dike where there's loads of reeds come out of there and everything. Uh, the Vellum Prime shins were just not letting the soil flow over my, uh, and it was stopping my depth wheel. So I've just I've just taken them off quickly, and uh, I'll sling them in the loader when I get back that way. Yes, yeah, so they're off now. I'm just uh, my Vellum Prime tank. I only filled it up with water. It was dead empty. I filled it up with water just. I'm just running that out now, I can see it, see it trickling out. As soon as it stopped trickling out, I just switch everything off. Away we go. So yeah, this is my day, cruising up and down, trying to keep you lot entertained. So I'll put the drone out in a minute, and you lot can all uh, marvel in my bottomless, bottomless black soil. I mean, I came over here when we were ditching, uh, when we were ditching the dike out, and I parked right in the wettest bit of the field. And my dad was like, yeah, yeah, I'm You'll be all right, won't you? I said, yeah, yeah, because it was frozen when I got there and thawed out when I came home. So as I went to get in my truck and drive away, it was like, whoa, 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 whoa. oh no, here we go, I'm stuck and Grumpy Grandad's gone with the 360 up the road. I'm stuck. But luckily I put it in four wheel drive and just about managed to wriggle out. Momentum is the key with this land over here. If you start moving, don't stop. Once you get going, you're away. Don't change gear or anything. Just nail that throttle and keep going. So, 
This is what we're doing for the day. Planting, yay! Racing along now folks, Grumpy Grandad's pretty much got the field finished. He's right over by the other side there, it's just a headland to do for him. He's gonna get on the loader and uh, just um, keep ferrying me boxes. Uh, I wish I had sprayed the wheat off to be honest. <clears throat> it's a bit coarser than I would want and uh, that wheat's gonna be an issue coming through. Uh, just means I'm gonna have to be hot on the uh, pre-em. Yeah, put the drone out for a little while. Jamie Sideland is over in his, um, on Bert's field, growing some grass. Um, so he was out there spraying his grass, I think. Uh, we got some lapwings fighting in front of me, fighting over a bit of territory. The crows have come and shown an interest now as well. And the RSPB have disappeared with their digger. I don't know where they've gone with that. And uh, they're building a big old badger set right next to my field. What a treat. Can't wait for that. So yeah, it's all going on. We're halfway across the field, I should say. Something like that. There's one, two, three, four sprayer wheelings and I'm now on the in the middle of the third one, shall we say. So yeah, we're getting there. Well worth starting at half past three this morning. Just to get Grumpy Grandad a good start on uh, basileering. We're not gonna take the basileer home till dusk tonight anyway, so when there's hardly anyone around. So he can get done with that and just just keep topping me up. Um, that's all we can do. Keep rattling on. So if you like today's video, don't make sure you uh, like and subscribe. Leave us a comment. We've had loads of comments in the last few videos. It's been mega. I like <clears throat> chatting to different people around the world. Fella in Canada wants some clothing. Uh, that's a bit difficult. Trying to get clothes out to Canada. It's a bit, bit, bit difficult, but thanks for watching over in Canada. And I'll um, give you an update of what I'm doing in a little while. Cheers, guys.
Hello Ben Landon, we are racing on now. I've only got one spray wheel and left to go. That's awesome. So you lot wanted to see my black soil, so uh, we'll get out and have a dig around. We'll have a little rattle around and see, uh, just make sure our plant is still playing ball. I just kept, I've been checking the depth all day and uh, I've lifted it out a couple now. I think it's too, I think they're a little bit too deep, but I don't think they'll need ridging up, so. It's horses for courses, isn't it? Some people plant them a bit deeper and then don't have to mold them up, so yeah. Going fine, Grumpy Grandad now just on the last headland and last little scoots and stuff. Last few little bits of short work and he's done, but we're gonna wait till later to take the Basilea home and it's quiet. Yeah, just give him a good escort home, like seven, eight o'clock time, maybe nine o'clock time. Keep everyone out of the way, you know, once people are all at home, tucked away and stuff, you don't have to worry about too many cars then, you can just get on the road and go with an escort, obviously. We'll get to the real black end of this field and I'll get out and show you some of my sooty black soil, black gold. Kind of looks a bit sandy up that end, but it, it all used to be white. Dad said when he was a kid, it's all, all used to be white fence soil like we got back home. And in places, it is still there is still bits of it. It's all blown away, I'm guessing. All blown away or all been farmed out, intensively farmed. So I'll uh, turn you back on in a minute. We're going to have a dig. FA5. F15, flying over, coming to make sure I'm planting them the right way up. Kind of cool when you get a flyby, isn't it? We, we're kind of used to it now, but I, I guess you lot are probably not, so that's kind of funky, isn't it? So yeah, what a contrast to the stuff we got at home, hey? This is um, pure black. Let me try and find somewhere for you lot to sit. There we go. Yeah, you can see, look, all the stubble from last year all still in there, some cattle muck in there as well. Everyone wanted to see it. You don't really often see it, but no seashells in there. It's just like peat, I'm guessing. But I thought I'd come and have a little dig and have a rootle around. Loads of moisture in there, obviously. See, I was, I was down another inch. I've lifted them out an inch, but I don't know if you lot can see that. Down there, look, there's a spud. Obviously I planted them the right way up, but I'm just gonna have a dig now and see where I'm at. The last um, reading I got on the planter was 8.7, so a little bit less than 12 inches. Let's measure one and see what we got. Probably closer to 14 inches there, so Don't matter, they're quite big small seed if that makes sense. <laughs> that's, that's closer to 16 inches, that is. Ugh. There you go, look, you've got to move that one in a bit. They work on a law of averages. See, there's your next one. So that's five, that one's number five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They're quite far apart then, really. But it doesn't matter. Come on, tape measure. 12.6. So that'll do. Somewhere roughly right. I'm happy with that. That's good. That's good. I'm happy with that. 12.6 12 that worked out at. So somewhere around 12 is fine with me. It's what I planted them at last year. And they turned out mega. So I'm about where I want to be. So let's just explain what happens on this uh, planter. The potatoes go in the hopper, this big hopper, and then it'll funnel down onto the belts here, and then off this top belt. This is a sensor I was talking about the other day. As you can see, look, every time I touch it, the light goes off. So once it's got enough potatoes in there, it fires them straight down the middle towards that sponge. Towards that sponge there, below the one, then they drop in. So it's pretty simple to set up. The only other setup I've got is I can adjust these flaps up and down. They just stop more stuff coming in there. And I've got my row width there, so I can adjust that. I kind of leave it on in between 45, 55 and 55. I kind of only move it to there to the big ones and then back again. I've got an agitator there that rattles the belts 
stop you getting doubles like you would get on a uh, cut planter if you got small seed so it's pretty simple really it does a good job and everyone around here just loves them really so it's so much easier and gentler on the uh, potatoes than a cut planter um, if you've got chitted seed like we have they they work a treat if you um, got odd shaped seed like agri can be sometimes then they're even better you know they just they, they don't care what the seed is they just as long as you set up your your lane width for bigger and smaller seed and uh, get your agitator right so it just bumbles them around so there's only one being fired out there at the right time and you can go like mad I mean 20 23 acres in here and I didn't get started till just after 10 o'clock so and it's only now not even three o'clock I shouldn't think quarter three so yeah We'll, we'll be done here at four o'clock so uh if i had somebody ferrying the boxes to me then 35 40 acres is possible in a day i love it uh yeah like i said to david you know I, I don't know why you would want anything else but if you want to be like he was planting i think he was planting salads and stuff well you want a quad planter for salads i'd have said because salads don't need to get very big do they that's the whole idea they don't need to get a, a great size they just need to um Put on a crop of tubers all like that size and and you can get hundreds of them in a bed that width and uh, get them lifted early so yeah it's horses for courses um i think david honestly you you would want a quad planter like i nearly i very nearly bought a quad cut planter before i bought this before this came up but it just wasn't right for us there's no reason for us to have four lines of potatoes in a two row bed Three I can understand, but then that's a whole another issue. But I'm not lifting mine early. See, salads and stuff, you can lift them in June and July, get them ready for everyone that wants a barbecue and stuff over the summer. Yeah, no, I, I, I'd highly recommend if you're growing main crop potatoes, just go and get yourself a uh, belt planter. Just watching the belt most of the day. Oh. I don't know if you can see that because my camera's fairly dirty. I just sit there watching the potatoes going up and down all day. And they do a mega job. I could go a bit faster probably if I wanted to. So this is our day, we're nearly finished. I've had the drone out. And uh, I'll wait and see if my phone goes for my cousin Oliver. He wants some planting help planting or not. I'll, I'll wait for the phone call. Yeah. We'll keep on trashing, boy. Grumpy Granddad's going to be finished very shortly, in, in about 10 minutes. So he, he'll be finished with the basilier. So that's good. He can either get a lift home and, and come and go and get a, tra a tractor to get some of these trailers home, or he can just keep ferrying me seed. So that's what we'll do. Cheers, guys. There we go then, folks. That is planting 2023 over and out. So the day's not quite finished yet. We've got all that stuff there to get you. And I got to try and um, escort Grumpy Grandad home with the Basilea. So that's going to be interesting. We're on our way home. We're done. Uh, my cousin's been on the phone. Can you help me planting? All right. Mm. If I have to. <laughs> if I have to. Yeah. Nice day off, and then chaperone two nice young ladies to the uh, Newmarket races on Friday. It's hoping to have a bit of a day off here tomorrow. I know I've had loads of days off with the uh, bank holidays and stuff we keep having, but three o'clock or ten past three when I woke up this morning, and then half past four, five o'clock when I got out to the yard. So I'm pretty tired. I'd like to go home now. Ugh, ugh, ugh. I have been sat in this either this tractor or the other tractor since five o'clock this morning, and I am hurting. I'm a little bit achy. I have been getting out and walking around, but only every 45 minutes or so. Uh, and when Dad's been filling me up with seed, I haven't been getting out at all. So, I feel a fitness program coming on, ready for my summer bod. Oh, I feel like a chiropractor. <laughs> uh, oh, uh. Jolly good fun, this is. Escorting something four metres wide down the road. Cousin Michael, uh, another car, didn't see that one. 
you get a proper bounce on with these skinny tyres and it moves you across the road so yeah, he found it down, loaded up and trucking. Oh, and we're back home, boys and girls. Hoorah! Anywhere in. <laughs> 